Hi, my name is Sean Beasley and I'd like to welcome you to this GIMP tutorial on Passepartouts. Passepartout is a paper cutout that's laid between the glass of a picture frame and the picture itself in order to protect it and to beautify it. So, it creates more uh, or less a cutout or a border and um, you can get really fancy with these things. So, let's go into the um, techniques behind creating a Passepartout in GIMP. The first technique I want to show you is a quick mask. If you click in the lower left hand corner, you can toggle a quick mask menu which creates a temporary layer or a temporary color channel, I'm sorry. And this color channel just allows you to paint around using your white as your foreground and any of your painting tools. For example, if I were to take the paintbrush tool, then I could increase the size so that we actually see what we're doing here. It's a large picture. Increase the size to 10. Then I could paint around. And some people use this to do cutouts uh, out of backgrounds and other different things. So there's a lot of uses for the quick, quick mask. I just want to show you what it looks like once we turn it off. It actually removes the channel that we saw and creates a selection, which uh, at yeah, at the first moment it doesn't seem to do anything for us because we can create a selection as is. But what we can do here is uh, refill this with black here in a minute. Um, we can actually see what our passport is going to look like. So I'm going to take my bucket tool, I'm going to fill it back in, and then we have our quick mask back to its original state. So creating a passport is simple. Then we go ahead and take a selection that we think we might want to have. We use our white as our foreground color. We take our fill tool, make sure it's set to normal for foreground color fill and fill hole selection. And then when we turn off our mask, we have a selection. And we can then right click here in layers and add a layer mask. When we choose to add a layer mask, we want to make sure that it's to selection and click add. And now you can see it, a alpha channel has been loaded and here's our layer mask. A layer mask is uh, nothing more than um, hiding portion of the picture. So if I uh, disable the layer mask, then you'll see that the picture is still there, but it's masked with uh, masked with the black color. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, re-enable the layer mask. Now at this point I could uh, start editing my layer mask. For example if I create a circle. Here I've got my, my circle tool or my ellipse tool set to a fixed size of 300 by 300. I'm going to go ahead and press the num. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and view the uh, fit image to the window. Ah, I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit. I'll do that with the plus tool. So I'm going to hit plus a couple of times. It's going to help me with the positioning of my elliptical select tool. You'll see that there's a plus sign in the middle of the tool, so it kind of helps you get it centered. And then what we can do is we can take our bucket fill tool. Again, now we're not going to use white because, well, we could use white if we wanted to create a little uh, tail on the picture, or we can use black if we want to actually start doing a cutout. Now we can take our move tool and make sure the move is set to selection. And then we can take our selection, move it up to the top corner, change to our bucket tool, make sure we have black for ground fill and fill hole selection. And then we'll do this on all four corners of the picture. So now I need to undo. Of 
go back, do this process again, take our move tool, get it as close as possible. Depending on the desired results, you might want to really zoom in or use guides to get the desired effect. As you see, once I move out of the canvas, my shape is actually starting to change. So you want to do the bottom corners first in order to ensure that you um, don't morph your shape so that you can't use it anymore. We're just going to take that as is. And now we've got a little cutout that we can use. So in order to make this cutout a little bit more visible, we're going to add a new layer with the background color because we want to have some white. Click OK and use this button to move our layer down. We're going to see then what it would actually look like if we uh, printed it out. You'll see that there's some cut-ins here which kind of mask it. You can do a lot of really cool things with Pospa 2s. So, for example, if I wanted to now um, add a star form or some other type of form. I'm going to go to my paintbrush tool. I've created a brush just for this scenario. Here's my brush. So I called it test brush because it was for another tutorial that I haven't published yet. And you see I have a really cool little star tool. I'm going to set the opacity down on this brush. Now I've still got my black selected so I'm going to go back and make sure that I'm working on my mask. If I just click the layer, then I'm going to be working on the layer itself, but I want to work on the mask. Now what I'm going to do is just paint a little black in there. So now I've got a really neat little design just using the masking. Um, I can create brushes. If I were to use this brush, go back to the um, actual layer before I started filling it back in. That's why it's good to have this undo toolbox open here. If you don't have this undo toolbox, then you can go to Windows, Dockable, Diabol Do Dockable Dialogs, and Undo History. Now this Undo History is going to appear in your main toolbox. If you have something in your main toolbox, so I'll go ahead and add layers, for example, again, then you can drag and drop and disconnect it and then you can arrange your desktop as you uh, want to, as it's easy for you. So I'm going to go back to my add layer mask. I'm going to add my white background using my background color again so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to just turn this back up to 100%. And I'm going to get right about in the middle of this picture Oh, I need to make sure I'm on my background again, on my on my channel, or on my layer mask. And then I'm going to just stamp this part of the picture out by clicking it a few times. I'm going to stamp this part of the picture out by clicking it a few times. I'm going to stamp this part out. Stamp that part out. Stamp that part out. I know everybody's seen these scissors that you can buy to actually work on your pictures. And uh, so once you've got a couple of cool set of brushes, that's basically what you're doing here is you're cutting around the border uh, using your using your tool and um, <clears throat> creating this fancy artwork effect. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, once you've started creating your basic form using the rectangle, then you can use different types of brushes in order to decorate the edges of your picture. When you're completely done, we'll go ahead and delete this layer. We don't need that layer anymore. We'll go ahead and apply our mask. Then we can take our image, we can auto crop the image, and now we open up a new picture. Well, let's go ahead and save this first. I'm going to save this as Pinky to keep our transparency. 
I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Click save. Now you can use this um, framed picture or this passepartout with the transparency to add it as a layer to another picture. And that's where the fun really begins. So let's take an example picture that I had. Then we can open up our PNG as a layer. Once we've opened it up, you'll see that it's created a layer over the over the top of the uh, picture. Then we'll take our resize tool, make it just a little bit smaller. We have to be careful when we use our resize tool to press Control in order to keep the perspectives on our picture. Then we click Scale. Then we have a lightly smaller. Um, cut out and if we resize the picture so that we can see our layer tools I'm going to take my image uh, view fit image in window what we can actually do is we can take our layer and change it to a screen for example that's a really nice image, it kind of looks like it's fading in. So we have a lot of different things we can do with this once we've taken my move tool, for example. Move it up a little bit. And uh, as you see, once you've actually created some type of uh, passport tool with a lot of... Uh, it has a lot of different possibilities. And that's why we're creating these, so that they're not just a picture in a picture, but they're a picture with a little bit more flair. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. Thank you.